Although, when you eat a high-protein diet, one that hits uh, close to a gram of protein per pound of body weight, uh, picking the right protein can be kind of like splitting hairs. I will say this, there are some proteins that are more suitable for bulking. For example, whey protein. Whey protein is probably one of the best proteins you can consume when it comes to bulking. Why? It has the lowest effect on satiety. One of the biggest challenges when you're bulking is getting enough calories. A lot of people find that to be a challenge, especially people with really fast metabolisms. Well, protein tends to kill appetite. So any of you who've ever bulked, who have trouble bulking, know eating high protein, but also getting enough calories, boy, can that be a struggle. Well, whey protein might be the solution. It produces the least satiety among the different types of protein, meaning you can hit those protein targets and still be hungry enough to eat those calories that you need to build muscle. I didn't know that. Yeah, it is. Whey, so whey, whey is less satiating than like a vegan protein? It's the, uh, uh, yes, um, yeah, nominally, nominally, but compared to like casein or especially um, like, Isolate. like bone broth or collagen. Yeah. Like collagen protein produces a lot of satiety. <laughs> Interesting. It, 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 it kind of becomes a gel in your no, stomach. It, and so is, it, it, but whey, it, like your body digests it very quickly. Is this based off of like surveying people after they take it and then them reporting back that? Because I, I could see where whey would report back that way because it tastes the best. Um, so people would be like, oh, it was so good. I still want more versus like if I have to like put down like a vegan protein or maybe a bone broth, although you, you rave about the bro yeah. bone broth. Also. No, it's not, it's not necessarily the palatability. It's the after <clears throat> effect, like how long I stay full after a particular protein. So like, for example, collagen, um, it's not as high in, in branched amino acids, gram per gram, not as, uh, I guess, high quality. Again, I do want to clarify yeah. though. And be clear, if your protein intake is high where it's supposed to be, then the type of protein you consume really doesn't matter because you're getting enough <clears throat> amino acids, period. But that being said, collagen protein fills you up. It produces a lot of satiety because it takes the longest to empty mm. uh, out of your gut. It kind of produces like a gel. Like if you've ever used pure collagen, you could see it thickens up if you leave it for a while. Whey is very thin, easily digestible. <clears throat> it it empties the, the, the gut very quickly. And so it produces the least amount of satiety. So if you're bulking and you're like, God, I, you know, I got to hit 200 grams of protein plus eat 3000 calories. And I'm like, Oh, I'm, I'm, I just can't do it. Yeah. Like whey protein. It's like, it barely affects appetite in comparison to other. It'd be interesting to parse out. I mean, I definitely, I could see how like I could increase calories substantially with whey versus the other ones, but uh, everything else I added to it was probably what was making it <laughs> satiating. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, not not necessarily just the, the whey cream, by itself. The, yeah, exactly. The peanut butter, eight <laughs> the egg yolks, you know, like everything else I'm just dumping in there. Uh, but yeah, when I have just had it with just ice and you blend it with ice, yeah. like you can just. Put okay. Are you are you are you doing a lot of protein shakes right now? Where are you at with your diet and stuff? Yeah. Well, not. I guess um, I I, t I tend to do it in the morning for breakfast, but uh, uh, if I haven't if I haven't hit my protein uh, intake, then then I'll usually like add one towards like before dinner, like yeah, yeah. after I work out or yeah. something. Yeah, that's usually when I. Wait well, I know that's how you use it, but I mean, are, are, would you say you're doing it every day right now? Or are you doing it once a week right now? Like how? I'd say a few times a week. Yeah, so it's okay, like so yeah, three to four times a week. I'm okay. Like, yeah, including weight protein. What about you right now? Yo, dude, uh, for me to hit my targets, so I weigh I'm a little heavy right now. I'm about 215. I may mean for 200 grams a day. Uh, I really have a tough time doing that with food. Once I get to like 170, I'm yeah. like, oh, I don't really want to eat more. I can eat more of like carbs, you know? Yeah. But to get like to 200 grams of protein, yeah. I find myself having to kind of choke it down. I don't want to do that, right? So at least not often. So I do shakes uh, almost every day. I have at least 40 grams of protein from a shake on a daily basis because it's too hard for me to hit. How about how about you? Are you yeah, similar? You know, yeah. You know, right now what I notice that's a little bit different about my diet is um, I'm, I'm not only am I doing the creatures of habit for breakfast in the morning, which is uh, using a vegan protein powder in there, then I'm again having another protein shake later on the day. Which that's a bit abnormal for me. Like uh, typically, so you're like I, 80 grams of protein from powder or from uh, supplements. It's 70. 70. Yeah, yeah, 70. Because the legion is uh, not even that. So legion is 25 plus the omelet. So it's like 30. So oh, legion, oh. legion is 30 something for their way, and then I'm getting 30 for the. And you're trying to hit what 200? Yeah. 
That's not bad. No, I know it's not bad, but typically the way I like when I start on my diet is like, of course, I allow that in there because I know I need to get it. And then the goal for me is always like, oh, can I get rid of the shakes and bars and have nothing but whole foods? But <clears throat> I'm just just being transparent. I'm, I'm like, I don't care enough or I'm, I'm lazy right now. I'm not prepping like I normally would prep. Like Katrina and I are staying ahead a day or two meal wise, but we're not doing our like a like, week ahead. Yeah, we yeah. when when I'm like dialed, I'm doing Sunday preps. Like that just when I prep Sunday for like three, four hours, her and I together in the kitchen and we're laying out a lot of meals today. I'm very consistent yeah. with my protein. I can get it all through Whole Foods. It's not a problem. You know why that's so effective is uh, because yeah. when you have a little bit of space to decide what you're going to eat, that little bit of space turns into eating things you're probably not ideal totally. for you. Yeah. But if you don't have that space, it's easy to be like, well, I already got my food. Or what it ends up doing is you default to something quick and easy like a shake that's right. or a bar. So that's it's right. like, you know, I, I, and so that's kind of where what's happened to me right now is like, oh, because the meal's not prepared. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need something to eat right now. I don't have something. Uh, the choice is, oh, order something from DoorDash or I'm going to just make yeah. a shake or a bar or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I've that's been traveling it. so much. I think that's probably why I've ramped it up mm. quite a bit. Like, so usually on the weekends is when I tend to do the most like protein shakes because it's just, I'm here, there, everywhere. So yeah, that's that's so much more convenient for me to do that. Like, you know, blend it yeah. up real quick and get out. By the way, at a, 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 in terms of health benefits, because since we're talking about whey, um, and you mentioned Legion, they have a, a really, really good whey shake. Uh, the health benefits... I don't know if you guys, do you guys know that there's lots of studies on the immune boosting, uh, cognitive boosting, gut health boosting effects of whey? Did you know that? By itself. Okay. Well, don't you think that's directly connected just purely to- No. It, it's not just purely protein? No. Okay. No, whey itself. Now, here's the caveat, right? If you can't tolerate dairy like yeah. me, then this doesn't, this doesn't count. So I can't have dairy. Yeah, but how? Okay. What do you say the percentage is of that? It's, it's like in terms of people that are lactose intolerant. Depends where you're from in the world. Yeah, and it's not just lactose intolerance for me. Most people who can't have dairy is lactose. Yeah, Some but, people, it's the dairy protein. That's me. Yeah, but let's for, let's forget about those okay. people because I'm curious about this this study. Yeah. I, there's a lot my, of studies by the way. My speculation would be that, and we talk about this all the time. Most people grossly underconsume protein. So if I took a group of normal people and then I and then if this is how the study goes. These 500 people, let's say, uh, we don't tell them to do anything. We measure the the cognitive yeah. effects, and then these people, we just all we do is add a whey shake. I guarantee you're going to see a boost right. in cognitive performance because they have more protein. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right, but mm -hmm. that's they actually have. It's actually whey protein has a whey protein supplementation has mm -hmm. a lot of studies, and they're not just muscle building and performance. There's a lot of health studies, a lot of gut health studies, immune boosting studies, and they do controls like that. Interesting. What, what's give, unique about the protein? It's probably the most complete. Well, they think it has to do with the branched amino acid content. The uh, peptides, whey peptides, seem to have some beneficial effects. Hmm. Um, it just, it's got of all the proteins that have been studied for its health benefits. Collagen also, collagen's up there, but collagen is more specific to like. Skin, hair, joint health. Whey protein. Maybe, Doug, you can even look this up. Look up whey protein uh, and health or whey protein and gut health. And you'll see. And I know this because I have a, uh, my godson's got uh, Crohn's disease. And when that first happened, you know, we all went down the rabbit hole of things that could help. Mm -hmm. And whey protein. Interesting. Like, yeah. So, um, again, it has to yeah, be I well tolerated. That. Now, back to what you said, Justin lactose and a protein, a milk protein intolerance are two different things. And usually if you have, if you have lactose intolerance, you'll have a higher chance of also having the protein intolerance. But what does that say there? Whey protein may be beneficial for inflammatory bowel disease. Yeah. Yeah. So mm. look at the 10 evidence. Click on that. That's Healthline. So this is a medical website. Look at the, uh, go down the list of, uh, the health benefits The the TV turned off, but you can read them to us. Yeah. So, uh, Excellent source of high quality protein, promotes muscle growth, uh, may lower blood pressure, may help treat type two diabetes, may help reduce inflammation. <laughs> Those three are funny. <laughs> may be <laughs> beneficial for inflammatory bowel disease. That's interesting. May enhance the body's antioxidant uh, defenses. Also may funny. have beneficial effects on blood fats. 
Interesting. It's highly satiating. Well, yeah. there you go. Okay, two or three of those are interesting. <laughs> yeah. The so, are like, and it can help you on. lose weight. That's the last yeah. one. Yeah. So, so, the, the, so a lot of those we know why. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, but uh, some of them are interesting. No, some of them are. There's at yeah. least two or three. And then, the, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's an interesting fact. Like some of them are obvious. Like you have to be careful, like taking that information. Yeah. Like, like helps you lose weight. Well, why? Well, yeah. because if you increase Because it replaced McDonald's. Bacon, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's why. Yeah. It's, like, it's, like if you eat 2,000 calories and you add 300 calories of whey, you're not going to lose weight. But, you know, back to what you were saying, Justin, lactose intolerance depends on the part of the world you're from. Yeah. So like if you're people like from Northern the Medi European, you're probably Northern like European, better. very small percentage yeah. lactose intolerant. Mediterranean, much higher. Yeah. Asian, much higher. I think like up to 60% of, uh, of people uh, from the Asian uh, countries, depending where. Africa. Are intolerant. Yeah. Like intolerant. Africa. Africa here's a weird one. They're, they're less in, uh, intolerant. No, right? there's a high lactose intolerance what? except for a specific region. Oh, okay. That's why. Yeah. So when you look at Northern Europeans, they have this gene that helps them continue to break down uh, <coughs> lactose, right? Babies can break down lactose, but we lose the ability as we get older or some people do, but Northern Europeans have this gene that continues to allow them to do so. There's a region in Africa, they evolved to have a different gene that still allows them to do this. So like the Maasai tribe, mm -hmm. consume a tremendous amount of milk, have yeah. no problem digesting Somebody it. was just telling yeah, me like about a, a company that exists right now that does, okay, you do, and it's not like your blood type, but you get, you do your blood work so they can see like your lineage so they can then spit off a diet for you. Yeah, I know. Those have been around for a while. How they, not the blood type one I'm talking yeah. about. Not I that. know what you mean. Like yeah. there, it's like what region you're from. Or, like the, I forget. The guy back. told me the name of it. It was so really just if it's, based, was if it's based off genes specifically, <clears throat> there's there's some cool science behind it, but it's still preliminary. If it's based off region, here's the problem. Like, do you know anybody besides me yeah, well, that is from one freaking region? Well, like, not, I, my whole well, family is from only, one city. Not only that, like, I mean, yeah. obviously the U.S. is a little, you know, we're a big melting pot. Yeah. So it's yeah. not the greatest example, but it doesn't mean that it's not, it can't be like that in Italy or other places in the world where, you know, just because a majority of people eat a certain way doesn't mean every single person yeah. in that area eats that way. So you could be in a in a region. I just where mean if you're just you know most people, their parents and their grandparents like come from like five different regions. Like, which one do you eat? Like, mm -hmm. well, my grandmother came. Well, from I've here, always okay. So I've always thought it was fascinating that there's there's certain foods like like there's there's Mexican food that I feel like it's just you would think should upset my stomach and it doesn't mm. upset my stomach. And mm. then there's other things that I think it was like, I should be able to digest yeah, fine. There, there has to be something with the bacteria there though. Like it's passed on as sure. well. Right. Because like, yeah. Cause I thought about that right? with like spices and things that just like destroy certain people and other people are just like totally yeah. you know, thrive with it. So I've always thought that I'm like, this should mess me up. You know what I'm saying? Cause I see how it affects other people. So that doesn't affect Did me Did you at know, all. by the way, I yeah. learned this the other day, there was this post. Maybe we can double check this Doug. Cause I don't, I didn't, I didn't fact, check it but this guy was talking about how why italy is one of the healthier western nations and they listed some stuff that was like well that's we'll see i don't know if that necessarily plays sun well. community and then they also have stricter rules with gmo stuff too yeah those are the three that he said wow you hit the nail on the head Ooh, now the Ruined gmo story now the, <laughs> adam <laughs> Wait a minute, did I share it with you? No, no. Are you, you on that C-Max or what? <laughs> no, I am. I took, I, took it, I took it this morning, dude. Uh, no, wait. Yeah. I also gave you that mix. I did. I did do the. I did oh. you. I did, did you. What do you think of that? Uh, so far, so good. It's still early, right? Yeah. It, it's only been in my system. I gave him the joy mode. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah, so yeah, he's yeah, getting a boner yeah, right yeah, now. Wow. Yeah, 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 Stay over there. That's, yeah. that's exactly what he's uh, doing No, actually, you'll feel that. It feels good. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> not in that way, by the way. Everybody calm down. No, back to the protein, though. It's interesting because protein powders have different value depending on if you're bulking or if you're cutting. Mm -hmm. If you're cutting, pro I, I think it's more valuable when you're cutting to avoid protein powder because you want to be satiated, right, with food. You want to eat food that's going to not make you want to overeat. However... Protein powder's value when you're cutting is you could get just protein with no other calories. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, gonna, I was just going to challenge it's, that because that's it, the I, value. I used, I actually loved. Um, so, one of my favorite things to do was use uh, just like a straight, like Legion has their pure vanilla whey, which is like, yeah. I want to say it's, I mean, you could correct me if I'm wrong, it's like 100 and something calories. It's just protein. Yeah, 100 and yeah. something calories for like 25 grams of protein. I would blend that in like a thick thing of ice and I would make this like, you know, like yeah. a like a milkshake. It would just yeah. it would just uh, basically ice water in that, yeah. or I'll do almond milk, which is you can get almond milk with thirty calories yeah. or whatever. Like so it's like this hundred and eighty calorie big. 
and just kind of keeping my mouth busy and yeah, sipping think, on something. That I think was the a, value is that, right, is that you could get the protein with no fat, no carbs. Mm -hmm. For bulking, I think the value of protein is it gets hard to eat that many calories when you're hitting high protein, and protein shake is an easy way. Yeah. Is it only 100 calories, Doug? Yeah, 100 again. calories, 22 even, grams of protein. Even lower than what I yeah. thought. Yeah, 100 calories plus some almond milk, which you can get for 30, 30 calories. So you're talking about like yeah. 130, and you just yeah. blend it on, on a ton of ice, uh -huh. so it's thick. And that's like when I was, because when you, okay, when you I cut. Mean, that's a good trick because when, it bulks. In yeah, the, the well, gut. when you're cutting, when you're cutting like consistently, especially as, as hard as I was for like shows, like uh, <laughs> you learn to be hungry. Like that's just part of, part of it. Like you accept it. Yeah, yeah exactly. It yeah. Anybody, anybody who <laughs> thinks you're going to diet like that and be like, oh, I never was hungry. Like, no, you're not doing it right then. It's like you, <laughs> you are going to be hungry because yeah. you are consistently under, under, under eating what your body wants. Right. So this was like, like you go to bed and a lot of times, like when I remember going to bed like that, you just want to go to bed and go to sleep because you're so hungry going to bed. And so that would be like my last thing that I kind of be sipping on that laying in bed and, and that way I get something and then I would fall asleep and then make the, make it a lot easier. Hey, how, at what point, cause you've, you've gotten down to pretty shredded. I've never been in a, in a, in a show, but I've gotten down to like, Oh, four, you've been pretty close. You've I've been, gotten pretty you've been, you've been pretty close. Do you remember the point where you realize like, Oh, I just, I just have to accept the fact that I'm going to be hungry all the time. It was yeah. like a game changer for me when yeah. I accepted it yeah. and just learned to like, just feel this so way all the time. I, I used to tell clients, it's and it, it. I know like my, exactly. my science nerds will totally like jump all over this, but I just think it's a good metaphor or example for clients is like, I used to tell them when that, that happens, that's your body switching over from glucose over into metabolizing fat. So when you feel that way, <laughs> I'd say that that it might not even be true, but it, it's a good yeah. right. Like, like, you may, like yeah. I know, like of course, like Burn the lanes and so that. Well, technically, yeah. it works like this. You know, that way they build a different relationship. That's yeah, exactly what I would teach them. Yeah. I'd say, listen, as soon as you feel that feeling, that's that burning fat. That's that system switching over. It's no longer using glucose, mm -hmm. carbohydrate. It's now using your body fat. But, so if long, yes. the longer you can sustain that and work through that, just and so they used to love that, and it worked for me too. I'd tell myself that it's just like, hey, I'm metabolizing fat right now. It doesn't have to. Leaner by the minute. Here's a, here's why this you're such a good trainer. So for, for, again, I'm gonna speak to the science people it's right now. Behavior, right there. Shut yeah. your faces. And here's why. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's true or not. What he did is he helped people, and this is this works for a lot of people because appetite and cravings is a big challenge. What he did is he's t teaching them to develop a different relationship with the yeah. feeling of hunger. The relationship they developed, if they listened to you and believed it, was. Oh, this is a good feeling. Mm -hmm. Not the relationship most people have, which is I got to get rid of this feeling. Yeah, like panic. Yeah. I got to yeah. get rid of this hunger feeling. I yeah. don't know what to do with it. Yeah. I know. That's that's what I, I, I once I accepted it, that's exactly how I felt. Like, okay, well, you know, I'm yeah. getting leaner. I'm getting leaner. Just going to be hungry all day long. <laughs> you chew a lot of gum. Today's giveaway maps split. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll notify you in the comment section. We're also running a sale this month on our correctional exercise pain relieving programs, MAPS Prime, MAPS Prime Pro, and the Prime Bundle, which is already discounted. You can take an additional 50% off all of those. If you're interested in this month's promotion, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. The gum, <laughs> you know what I used to do? Uh, this is so bad. I mean, it actually works. I'd buy uh, carbonated water. So oh, if you yeah. get carbonated water, and I'd add a little mm. salt to the rim and a little mm. lime and pretend it was a, a beer. empty margarita. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would drink it and be like, oh. oh, I did stuff like that. I did stuff like that. I had all kinds of like rice cake things like that. I mean, there's a lot of actually things Doesn't that if you are, are, are <laughs> try, what'd you say? I'd say that would just make me angry. <laughs> <laughs> you are like an there's angry dieter. I yeah, remember I when we were you all leave that show you were all <laughs> you, He gets angry. You know That's why? why I don't ever go all in. You guys are like 100%. I'm like, dude, I get to a point where I just, I turn into an asshole and like nobody wants to be around First of all, me. One, hold, one on, hold on a second. So do we. The difference is this. <laughs> Here's why you have a challenge with it, Justin. Because you reject so strongly the whole look at me aesthetic yeah, attitude. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. for you, it's like, why am I doing this? I hate people. Yeah, yeah I, I get like to that. that point like where you push me far enough and I'm like, I don't even like this. Why Which I, I believe this? I can I can relate to you on that one because yeah. I, it's one of the reasons why I have a hard time right now like getting really lean. I have, because I don't care enough. Like yeah. I just don't care enough to really want to do yeah. that. Like, And right. I've already... For me, like uh, the competitive side is what got me before. Like I, totally. I'm, well, you I'm, had to get on. A, I have, yes. have to do that. To yes, I'm competitive, yeah. and so if it's me versus other people and me trying to prove that I've got more knowledge in this, like that, I leaned into that, and it was just like, yeah, watch me do this, right? Totally. And then once I've done it, it's kind of like, 
Yeah, I don't really want to go. Been there. I, yeah. I got to tell you know it's funny. I got to tell the audience what it's like <laughs> working with uh, confident, self-aware, stable men. So we're all we're all kind of in this like it's yeah, good it's, and bad, right? We're all kind of this like oh let's get lean stage. We kind of talked about it. Now if you're if you're friends with like insecure dudes, it's really easy to get them motivated because you just talk shit. Mm, like yeah. I'm getting shredded. And they're like oh fuck. Okay. <laughs> I I start doing that. And Justin laughs at me. This is yesterday. I'm like, oh, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm singing songs about getting lean. I'm on my diet, you know, whatever. Justin's like, nobody cares, Sal. <laughs> <laughs> I walk out defeated. I felt like, a little bad. I was like, yeah, that's kind of an asshole thing. <laughs> well, I, call, I, called you, I called you less fat yesterday for something. What would you, you came uh, in and you said something, or you said you were doing something. I said, you do look less fat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. A little <laughs> less, less puffy cheeks. Yeah. He doesn't care, though. No. no you know no. what I used to do with, uh, <clears throat> but, so I used to, my, one of my first mentor, Don, good friend of mine, right? I was 18 when I worked under him and there was a period there where both of them, him and I were like, let's get lean, right? This is when I was always bulking, so I didn't even know what that meant, but I'm like, all right. Well, we used to mess with each other and one of the things I would do, this is how messed up, this is how hilarious it was. I would go get lunch for us and I'd put like extra mayonnaise on his like, <laughs> <laughs> sandwiches or like extra sugar in his coffee. I wouldn't even tell him. Baker you know? and I used to do that when we lived when we lived <laughs> together. So and how, him and I, how sneaky and shitty. Well, I used to pour like olive oil Man, and shit in his tea. What? <laughs> yeah, dude, because he's so dense. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he's throwing an extra two hundred calories. He's like, wow, this 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 is only three hundred calories. It tastes amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's messed well, up. there was money on the line you for us, right? We, we, we were like dumb. And, like we but you knew like, he would do that shit to you. Of so, course, yeah. yeah. It was fair game. You know, saying everybody messing with. Did each you other. ever do the candy bars in the person's uh, like like a uh, desk and shit? No, like that? I didn't oh, I that. did, bro. I, I would buy that. like candy bars <laughs> and put them in Don's <laughs> office. <laughs> One time he got so mess with their willpower, bro. Back then, yeah. the the gym space was so crazy. It was so wild west. Like, I remember one time. I, I kept doing that. I kept putting candy bars, and he always had a tough time getting lean. Right? He always he gets strong and big. Getting lean was hard. And I remember one time I was outside his office, and I literally loaded his desk with like candy. And he just got I don't know what happened early in the day. He must have got mad at his ex. Or I don't know what it was. He fucking opens the door. He's like, "Stop!" Fuck! Like yelling from the gym, and he just threw all the candy out the out the door <laughs> in front of the whole gym. I was like, <laughs> "You know, you you bring up candy right now, which is funny. I didn't share it on the podcast, so I should share it now because Katrina called me out on it. So." I've talked long, if you've listened long enough, you've heard me talk about my sugar addiction or anything. Yeah. Like for sure have uh, got a really good handle on that. But there's, there's these moments where I go to the movie theaters with my son. I get, let him have some gummy bears. I have, obviously I give most of them to myself and my niece yeah. and then the little bit. It's to Cause him. you don't want them to eat a lot. Of yeah. Yeah. Right. So, the right thing. and I'm, I'm eating it and boy, I tell you what, and I don't know if this is a, a physiological thing. I don't know if it's a psychological thing or not, but, I mean, I just don't have candy ever anymore. And so I had it and boy, did I like once I, so I go out and I go buy the monster came back, huh? Whoppers, junior mints, hot tamales. <laughs> Whoa. And, yeah. All, Whoa. so all those boxes, Dang. those are big boxes too. Yeah, oh yeah. At the, at the theater. And it's like $40, you know what I'm saying? Like $40. <laughs> Oh my God, dude. <laughs> Four boxes wow. of candy. Hey, hey, the person's like, damn, you're gonna give the, your little kids all that candy? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's going to other people. Hey, do you hide it, by the way? <laughs> so, well, so, oh, I, the, not for my son. Yeah. So I got That's it. That's what over, I mean. You hide yeah, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got it over here and I'm like, I'm like picking at it. So that, and, but what I thought was an interesting thing, like I didn't even, I just did it, right? I went back there, like I was like, oh, I want something else. And then when I was in line, I was like, oh, man, I haven't had this forever. I haven't had that forever. I'm, and just buy them all, right? And I end up opening all of them and just having a little bit out of all of them. And the only reason why anyone knows is because I left them in the truck and Katrina got there. She's like, oh my God, I saw the candy that you bought. And I was just like, I don't know what got into me, but it's it's so crazy that you, it's like, all I can relate, I'm probably somebody who has uh, struggled with alcoholism has probably can relate to something like this. Boy, where, somebody just got mad right now. Yeah. You're like, oh, you compared alcohol. Oh God, no, just everybody gets so sad. I know. I'm, I'm not saying it's harder or easier. But my point is like, what I thought the the uh, the disconnect that I have, yeah, right. Like I, I I'm I'm so disconnected from that that I could do something like that where, you know, I'm in the moment watching the movie. I'm actually watching my son most of the time, having a great time. Have a couple of his gummy bears. Go, mm, dad gets triggered. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm gonna go walk with it and just do it, and then catch myself doing something like that. I'm like, wow, that's so wild to go from zero to a hundred like that. Over. It's not like. I, I like, I go, cause Katrina can do this. Like mm. she can buy, and I don't know if you guys can relate to this. You can do this or your wives can do this. Katrina can buy a 
you know, a pint of ice cream. It could stay in our freezer for six months and she could have a spoonful at a time for six months. Mm -hmm. Like just yeah, every once in a while. She's obviously psycho. Yeah, like have this yeah. weird like thing, thing where she can just go in there and just have one. That is not me. Like if it is in the house and I know it's in the house, the, I'm going to go have it's it. And then down. when I decide to go taste it, my logic is, no matter how you drum it up, it's a thousand calories. If I spread it over six months or I eat it right now, I've got to burn it off. I got to use it. I got to do whatever. That's the that's it's, the post uh, that's the post activity uh, where your your uh, what is it rationalization? Yeah, that's after you do it. Yeah, like, well, I know it's so illogical, yeah. right? I know it's uh, not like a, a smart way. I know it's a bad you, relationship. So you know it. what it is. So um, psychologists will talk about this, which uh, maybe this is it. I don't know if this is it, but this is what they talk about where. It you there's a, a tremendous amount of willpower or discipline, and behind that discipline is willpower <clears throat> that keeps you from doing said action. When you break the dam, then the the willpower's gone. Yeah. So it's like I've already had five. Now whatever with you know strings of discipline was holding this together yeah. are now broken, and that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you'll see people with any behavior they have that they struggle with, yeah. whether it's drugs, food, alcohol, sex, you know, electronics, whatever, that, that the second they have, they can't do the whole, like, I'm going to have a little bit. It's like, I'm, that's so, why they don't recommend. So, what is, so what's the prevailing thing? This will be great when we have, uh, we can talk about the psychology side with, when Adam Lane gets here, because oh, I'm yeah. sure he'll have something to say about this. So is the, um, is the idea or is this, is the best strategy to work towards abstaining completely and being like eliminating or is the goal to uh, eventually be able to reintroduce into your life and still have it uh, here and there? It, so the strategy changes depending on the substance. So um, alcoholics... Well, let's use candy since so, we're talking about mine. Um, I mean, if you think that's realistic for you, because candy... See, the difference with, with candy is it's like everywhere and your kid's going to have some... I mean, I guess you could always never have it. Yeah, it's like social. I really acceptable. never have it anymore. I really don't. You probably and, fine. Never and what, have it and again. What, what, yeah, and, it's, and I don't actually crave When you don't have it, you don't crave it. That's the other thing, by the yeah. way, that I noticed. So that was on Saturday. Today's Tuesday, right? I have that, or Sunday it was. I have that. It just and, triggers all those Oh, yeah, the pathways. last two nights yeah. before going to bed, I'm like, sweet tooth. And mm -hmm. I haven't had that feeling in a long time because I haven't had it in there. And yeah. all it took was sharing a couple gummy bears and popcorn with my son, which is total not normal behavior off. for me, sets me off to yeah. your point. And then it's just like, oh, why not have all of these? It depends on the substance, like <clears throat> um, like gambling. They don't tell people who are addicted to gambling, just gamble a little bit. That's what we got to work towards. Mm. Like things you could get away with the rest of your life never doing again. Yeah. It, it depends on the damage of the substance. That's when they'll recommend that. Otherwise, like food addiction, which is the most abused substance in modern societies is food. Obviously people yeah. abuse food more than anything else. People can't never eat. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why it's so challenging. Whereas sure. if you have a heroin addiction, you know, you can at some point be like, I'll never use this again. What's neat about the evolution for me in this is that, so I went and did all those things. The difference today that probably that let's say this uh say 10 years ago when i if i, if I would have done something mm -hmm. like that is i actually would have ate all the candy until my stomach hurt oh i would so you didn't do that oh no i didn't oh. even i didn't even bro put that's a, huge progress i didn't even put a dent in half of those three i just bought them because i i wanted to try all of them mm. and i had bro, a, that's a win yeah it is in a sense oh well, i mean that's a big win like a, a, a real win would have been just enjoy the popcorn and the gummy bears nah, with my I think son. You're judging and the, and yourself a little harshly. Yeah. Ten years ago, you're saying you would have ate all of it. Oh, yeah, I would have ate all. It was my stomach. The fact hurt. that you didn't even eat half of each—that's a huge win. You guys don't have that with anything. Well, you have chips like that, potato chips. For me. Well, but can they? Will it make your stomach hurt if you continue? Like I will. There's there's certain candy will do this. Potato ice cream chips will do this. or French fries. If they're in front of me, I'll eat them until they're gone. Even if I don't, even I'll literally force. It's like I, I'm like eating them. Like why am I still doing? Yeah, that's it? like the candy. Breathe. The candy, like yeah. I know I'm already full from it. I've already yeah. had a thousand calories. It, but I will if it's there's still some left. I'll keep eating until literally I get like the like. Yep. Oh, okay, I can't have any more. Yep. Yeah. I'll yeah. throw it away. What I'll do is I'll eat chips and then I'll look at the bag and be like, I'm just gonna toss these because I know what's gonna happen later. So I'll end up throwing them away. Uh, it, it was ex what was the way it was explained to me is you develop these neural pathways that are very complicated. There's the the neurochemicals, dopamine, serotonin, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But there's also like psychological connections. There's there's lots of connections that can happen with these neural networks. And the way it was explained to me, I thought this was a brilliant way of explaining it. Think of fresh snow. So it's totally smooth, right? And then you get one person skiing down, creating a track. And another person goes down the same track. After three or four times, 
when you're skiing, it's almost hard not to go on that track right. because it's already been made. So in order to create a new pathway, you got to go through that fresh snow and it doesn't feel smooth. It doesn't feel easy. And you got to keep doing that and allow snow to fall, to fill up or to kind of erase that old track. Some of these tracks, if they're developed when you're a child are always there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're all, there's always going to be that, uh, that, that connection. And no matter what you do, because parts of the brain kind of fully form past it, once you're, uh, you know, uh, young, they're never going to go away. So that's yeah. why like childhood traumas never really, you know, you can work with them, learn how to cope with them, never fully go away. Mm -hmm. Connections like we may make with, you know, sugar or foods or whatever, they may never go away. So. Yeah. I kind of go back and forth. Like I, I think, I think now that I'm older, like uh, I had so many issues with some of the foods that I used to have those propensities towards, like cookies, especially it was a big one for me. Like I would just like eat all of them before my brother could get them. And that was like a, a, an association I had. And now it's just it, it, the consequences of it. Like I just, everything hurts my stomach, dude. It sucks. Like anything like that was used to be awesome. Like I have a completely different association with it now. So it's like, you know, I'll, 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 I'll do enough. I like, I, I press, I guess my pressing isn't like a huge binge. It's more like, yeah, dude, I'll, like what you fuck can get it, I'm going to eat it. You know, like I just had like, like pretzels with this like dipping cheese. Like when I was out in, in Arizona, that place we went oh, to. Oh, did you go there again? Yeah. They were, went, those are so good. Yeah. I went back <laughs> specifically for that because I remembered, I mean, the service was terrible, but again, uh, but literally they had those like pretzels that you could dip into this cheese. I'm like, oh, I'm so great. bad because I made destroyed me again. <laughs> and I just, I knew it was coming, but I just had to do it. So when my gut is really bad, uh, it's easy for me to avoid certain things because the reminder is like instant. <laughs> yeah. When my gut heals. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm worried about. Back. Honestly, that's what I'm worried about. If like, uh, you know, everything kind of resolves yeah. and I get back. So let me tell track. you what I, let me tell you what I do, Justin, just in case you go down the path, you'd be like, oh, Sal told me about this. This is what I'll do. I'll like gut will go to shit and I can't eat anything. And it's like a strong reminder and I do real well. Then it starts to heal. And then this is what I'll do. I'll have some, like I'll have something like, and I'll wait and be like, Oh, I'm okay. Then I'll do it again. Oh, I'm still okay. And then I'll do it again. And then boom, I'm fucked. I'm like, ah, here we go again. Yeah. Start to cycle over. Uh. So I definitely know that there's a, uh, psychological part for sure too, with me, because I know that there's this connection with, uh, not having a lot, this sharing with the family. So I've talked about this also before. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So this is such a sad, like it makes me sad. <laughs> it should make you sad. <laughs> uh, you, sh you should not be sad. In fact, we were just talking about Everybody you. Everybody fights the, the ice day. cream, right? Like, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure you were more poor than I was. Uh, I really do believe that you actually grew up rougher than I grew up. Just Or maybe I felt no. it more. Because, <laughs> 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 you know, pg e wasn't as important as us having like a Pepsi or a horse. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, <laughs> so, 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 I used to work close from the bargain barn. You know, I don't really <laughs> I mean, so you have all these kids in the house and then you get like, you know, one package of cookies or one thing like that. And you did. Whoever you eats it, eats yeah, it. Yeah, whoever eats it, eats it. And so it would be basically you would you would have to do that. And so I definitely have that. And I, re I vividly remember when I moved out when I was 17 years old, one of the first things that like became every I always had. In like full <laughs> gallon of ice cream in the, in the freezer that was mine. Just constantly. Yeah. Just, yeah, that was like, and that was like, that was such a big thing for me. Like, I remember making a big deal about that. I go to yeah. a grocery store and that's all I got. Well, <laughs> it's all, you also did that Hilarious. with air conditioning, right? You yeah. could never turn on the yeah. AC. Uh, yeah, so I wrote so that's why you always had a full blast. <laughs> that's still today. I haven't got through that. I still, I, Katrina and I were fighting about that last night, bro. It's cold. Yeah. You turn the AC yeah. on? Yeah, dude. Or I open all the, I open all the doors so the air is coming in, but then I like the fires and so that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them that. Wow. Well, I like the ambiance of the fire, but I like the cool air coming in. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just my like, dad. So the only person that had an issue with that was my dad because my poor father would bust his ass, work hard physical labor. He had four kids though, right? Yeah. So he'd buy a treat for himself. And like my poor father, like I think back and I'm like, man, what a bunch of shitty kids. His one like thing that he did, the one thing that my dad did for himself, because everything else was for everybody else. Same thing right. with my mom. She did everything for everybody else. She's still like that. The one thing my dad would do, he's come home from work tired. We'd eat dinner and he'd watch TV and he'd eat something like ice cream. That mm -hmm. was his one thing. Looking mm -hmm. back, this is obvious. At the time, I didn't realize it, right? Uh, so he would sit down on the couch. First off, couldn't find the remote control 80% of the time. Uh -huh. That almost always turned lose into- Lose his mind. Lose right? My his, dad's same. Oh yeah, dude. He broke the couch once because yeah. he couldn't find- he was, <laughs> 
<laughs> looking through the cushions everywhere. Thermostat and the remote. Dude. Those are like like World War Three. One time he's looking through the couches, he couldn't find. You know, there has to be such like an eighties nineties thing. I don't know right? why. I mean, yeah. It's so like an eighties nineties. Well, thing. I mean, Dad. it's happened a few times totally. to me where I'm like, you want to watch something? Kids are down. You're trying to find a remote. I can't find it. I Five mean, minutes I, later, I lose my shit over yeah. that. Oh, like, dude! That, even now, I'll I'm never forget. Like, he got so got mad. He's down. looking through all the cushions, and finally, he took. He like. Put, he broke the back of the couch to look underneath it. <laughs> yeah. Like that? Yeah, dude. Just, <laughs> you know? Now, do you guys, because you guys have uh, older, old enough kids that like go and get foods and snacks with that. So do you guys have any, do you guys hide any foods? Yeah. Okay, so. You, you guys have to have things you buy and then Sometimes I'll get some Reese's cups and put them like way up listen, high. Listen, listen. <laughs> you're not a parent if you haven't done this. If you haven't gone in the pantry, closed the door and ate your little snack in the pantry. <laughs> totally. <laughs> every parent, you're lying if you haven't done if that. If you haven't done that, you're full you're of lying. shit. Every, every parent goes in the pantry, closes the door, and eats the fucking snack okay, in the Okay, probably the every parent that listens to this podcast because you're health conscious and you're trying not to yeah. let your kids see those behaviors. I think the other parents don't give a fuck. I think no. most parents just go grab well, the bag of chips dude, and eat it right from the I, I swear yeah, to God, my true. my two-year-old has the hearing of a freaking blood, uh, <laughs> of, a, of, a, of a canine. I'll open the pantry and you it makes it. a distinct sound. Anywhere in the house he is. <laughs> dude, what even what you eating? Yeah. What you eating? Nothing. Yeah. So what I do now is I have certain foods he hates that he's tried many times. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like macadamia nuts. And then I sometimes use psyllium husk powder, which mm -hmm. for some reason he thinks is protein shake. I'll have him taste it. It doesn't taste good. So I'll go in there. I'll hit him running up and I'll grab that thing. You want some? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. And he walks away. <laughs> and I'll grab the other thing. <laughs> Here, you sure? You sure you don't want this? No, I don't want it. Dude, I cannot believe my son's appetite right now. We had the other morning. I we are. Is he going through a growth spurt or something? I mean, he's kind of been like this for a while. Like I know he has. Is he tall? He's tall for his age. He's he? actually not that tall. They, the doctor said so. At this point, they say they can predict, and they predict six foot. So they think he's not going to be. He's not going to be as tall as I am. Yeah. So that's but I, that's the. I mean, that's the average height in America. I mean, that's you guys. You guys five, are all sitting, you guys are six foot. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's not short. I I'd rather be six. I've said that before. I'd rather be a little six. I'd rather be six foot than six three. Even now as an adult. Yeah. I know when you were younger because it made you not look as skinny. Yeah, I guess it's a good. That's a good point, right? Yeah. I still. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm happy. Like I wouldn't like whatever. What I'm not, I'm fine. I'm six foot six three, but I, six foot would make me stock here, which I would have preferred to be. So you like, want the same muscle mass, but six foot. Especially since I didn't go anywhere with my six three, it didn't didn't benefit me on the on the basketball court. It didn't benefit me in the swimming pool. So you know how attractive I didn't use your swimming call. Do you bro. know how attractive a man is when he's tall to other women? No, so you're, that's a big deal. You're right. You're you're yeah. but once you, uh, I think most yeah. women would agree that once you hit the six foot, it's fine from there. Unless you're an abnormally tall woman. Like if you're a five eleven woman, you want probably six three and above type of guy. But if yeah. you're if you're a, if you're an average height woman. You, six foot would be considered that's the, that's the, tall. That's what they consider tall. Yeah, yeah. most women would look at you, consider you guys tall yeah. guys too. Yeah. So it's not like I'm like abnormally taller than you like that. But I'm tall enough. The thing that I never liked, oh, you always get sized up when you're that guy. Mm. Oh. When I walk into public places. You also yeah. you also look like, like the kind of guy though. You look a little bit, you know what I mean? Do I? Yeah, you kind of look a little bit like, like you should fight that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this guy's gonna be a problem. You, yeah. <laughs> Let's keep our eyes on this guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you you have an air of you're confident, but it's an air of cockiness. You know what I mean? Is so maybe that's what it that's is. That's what it is. Yeah. Bro. You're the guy in the room. So you add that to six three. Yeah. So I walk like, in. If I beat that guy up, yeah. I'm gonna be the, yeah, get the cocky shittier guy. posture. It I so I remember. <laughs> yeah. Look look sad. Yeah. Look look sad. <laughs> Don't look so confident. Look sad. <laughs> look loppy. Yeah. Try to look loppy. Yeah, you get less people trying to size you. I you, you know I remember in my like mid to late twenties. That's kind of why I had to stop going to bars and stuff like that because it was like we almost always get into yeah. something and yeah. I always felt like and I, I was I'm not the type of guy that wants to fight I never went looking for yeah. fights I always ended up protecting one of my friends or whatever like it was but I mean when I go places there always seemed yeah. to be dudes that would size a guy up like me and it's just like oh let me go test my I strength with this guy if you have muscles too I mean I yep. think that's just any like because that, that happened all the time for me yeah so. and I don't attract the pussies because the guys that are like weak and they don't like they're, you're not going to get like some little tiny guys going to be like oh let me go try my shit on this like I get the dudes that are tough <laughs> they're like, like hey, man. yeah they're big or they're strong <laughs> or they're fighters it's like yeah. it's like let me go try try and fight this guy I'm like, I'm you know it's funny too it's uh I don't, how long did you guys you guys figured this out once you get to a certain age you guys figure out how easy it is to diffuse sometimes that shit yeah where the dude comes up and he's like oh like, you know what? let me buy you a drink bro yeah. done yeah. Done or oh you 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 think you're tough like no these muscles are just for looks done yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Like I took me a long time to yeah, figure that out. Yeah, self-deprecating humor is very powerful in a situation like that. Yeah. If you have the ability to kind of pick on yourself, which by the way too is another form of real confidence because Totally. I mean, and I didn't learn that till yeah. later when I started hanging around other fighters and dudes that were real badasses. Most of those guys, there's just there's a still a small sliver of them that are but massively so insecure. They, Most of them yeah. are very confident in what their capabilities are, and they're the easygoing guys. Hicks and Gracie is uh, is widely known, or uh, I guess considered the the most uh, the best Gracie uh, family member for in terms of fighters. He did an interview once, and he talked about that confidence, and he goes uh, to the reporter or person asking him, he goes. Would you get mad and, uh, oh, and fight a if a five year old came right. up to you? Right. And the guy's like, no. And he goes, because you feel no threat. He goes, that's how I feel. When somebody comes up to me, mm -hmm. I feel no threat. So that's such, a, that's know, such a great analogy. It's a great way so to carry true. yourself. Yeah. You know what else he said, which is crazy? People used to challenge the Gracies all the time. And uh, there's one fight in particular where people would challenge him and he'd fight them. And he says, he said, um, we'll fight in my dojo, no cameras. And the guy goes, no, we'll fight out here and I want to record it. He goes, okay, yeah. I'll give you two options. If we fight in my dojo, no cameras, I'll stop when you tell me to stop. If we fight with the cameras, I'll stop when I feel like stopping. And the guy's like, uh, I'll fight you in the dojo. <laughs> you know? That's yeah. kind of a crazy thing to hear from yeah, someone that like is, that. that. I don't know crazy. if I want to keep doing that. You yeah. know? Do, you remember, do, you, do you remember ever a, a time where you almost got into it? Like, where were you most scared about a potential altercation that you were about to get into? Like, have you ever been in a situation where you own, like a UFC fighter or a guy like that? Was trying to start something with you, or was there ever a moment where you're like, "Oh, this is no"? Uh, but I recognized one one time at a bar, and like I had a few drinks in me, and I think he thought I was like one of those guys, you know, that were like, "Hey, bro, you know, you're that guy on TV," and you know, and I was coming in a little hot and sloppy because I had a few drinks, and so I recognized him, and I was like, "Oh man, I think I saw you on like uh, whatever that show is on um, Ultimate Fighter." Yeah, Ultimate Fighter. He was like an Ultimate Fighter guy. And so he kind of like, you know, peacocked me and kind of like lunged at me. And I was like, whoa, I just like, I just wanted to say hi, you know? And then I just kind of moved on. But I was like, he was like ready to go, dude. He was all cocked and ready to go. Uh, I the, the uh, I always feel, and I think people are lying when they don't, when, when they don't feel, you're, there's always a sense of fear when you know, you know, something's going to happen. You don't want to, you know, someone's going to get hurt. Hopefully it's not you, but even if you hurt someone else, it's never a good situation. But the most fear I ever felt was in uh, Cabo. We were at a bar and it got late and the crowd changed from like the tourists to like the locals. Mm, yeah. And one of my buddies had a little bit of a, a little bit of an altercation with one of the bouncers. And you saw all these locals start to gather together. And I'm like, we're not in America. I don't know what could happen oh, that here. Scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Like this could be really wow. bad. And yeah. so we bounced, but I remember feeling the air, feeling tense Ooh. and being like, I felt yeah, that group tension. Just like, dude, that reminds like me. Like they run the show there. You know, you don't yeah. want to be, we were at a bar. It was in San Francisco and me and my friend, and it was like, no, nobody was really in there yet. And we were just sitting at a bar drinking and, um, <laughs> and this guy came up and, you know, we just kind of look over to our right and, and this dude is like a Tongan guy who was like really big and, and we're like, oh, hey, start talking with him, super nice. But then all of a sudden the bar, we look out and the whole bar just filled up with like Tongan people. And it was just like th the biggest people I've ever seen. And it just like, I don't know, at that moment, I just felt like, dude, like somebody could squash me in like two seconds, but they're the friendliest, like fun loving people. I was like, mm. dude, I was like super scared though for a minute. Massive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there was a, who's that one? You guys know that guy that, uh, he worked out at Santa Teresa. He was like, Isaac Sapuaga. Mm -hmm. In his fifties. Oh, I thought you're talking about Isaac, who was the, he played, played for the, the Niners. No, I saw him too. Oh, you're talking about there's uh, this like fifty something year old uh, tub Tubblefield, uh Stubblefield. Dana, I don't know Dana Stubblefield. I, I don't know. Right? He, was, he looked. He was, he was. He's in his fifty. Look up Dana Stubblefield. He's like in his fifties. Big. Or oh no, this is a big black guy. No, 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 no. This was a. This was like I think he was. Uh, did I talk to him? This, I want to say the he Tongan was, guy is Isaac Sapawaga, who used to be a lineman for the 49ers, who I've told stories about. I saw him too, though. But that's just a. Mo he's just a. Oh, he's massive. It he's doesn't even make sense. Massive, though. strong. He's the one I told you, a skull crushing, like 90 pound dumbbells right yeah, next no. to me. No, 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 <laughs> I like, no, no, no. He's a beast, dude. No, but I was, I, I was jacked at that time, too. Like, yeah. I was all feeling myself. Yeah, no, no. There was a there was this dude, this, and he was in his late 50s because I asked him, I specifically asked him because he was benching. He was probably 250 lean and he was benching four plates and he was just like, it was moving like 135, like bink, bink, bink. And he would always come in. He had, he would get real bloodshot eyes while he was working out. 
And I walked up to him like, bro, I'm like, you are one of the strongest dudes like ever. How long have you been working out? And he's like, he gave me this crazy number, like 30 years. I'm like, wait a minute. How old are you? He's like 58. Like, no, you look like you're 40. Yeah. Trip me out. How trippy know. was that to hear uh, Steve Cook say he was benching 225 in well, sixth mean, grade? Sixth grade. I mean, yeah. Sixth grade? Yeah. You There's some genetics. Beast. There. Bro, yeah, that is wild crazy. to me. I was in my 20s and I still couldn't I don't even know how to wheels. bench press, I think. Who's, <laughs> who was, uh, Bo- uh, what was his name, Bobby Harris? Did he work for 24 Bobby Harris? Yeah, yeah. You ever watch him squat? No, but I heard how strong he was because he's really close friends with Marcucci and with uh, Baker. They were Didn't all work time. out. And he went out and squatted six plates. They didn't even work out. Like that? Yeah. I mean, he's, I mean, you could tell. You look at the guy. He's just, yeah. he was just jacked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He'd go out and squat five, six plates like a, <laughs> like a horse. Where's that coming like from, nothing. bro? Yeah. It just yeah. makes me mad. Yeah, I know. That's so but, frustrating. Yeah. But do they have the number one fitness podcast in the world? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It makes me feel hey, better. Hey, you bro. see, speaking of our podcast, <laughs> so I've been exploiting my son. Uh, trying to get him to do like our commercials and oh, stuff really? like that. Yeah, yeah, whatever we have, one like that. So just handing products. <laughs> yeah, so I did. Well, I did. I don't. Do you remember the video I, used I did? To do that. Dude. I remember the video I did the magic spoon, and it was like a terrible one. It was yeah. just like <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't working with me. Whatever. I got a good one on Butcher Box, right? So we, Butcher Box, it, he's so he's got these. Uh, I we didn't know this until I think they had. They I think they ran a special maybe like six months or so ago. I don't remember recall when it was. And Katrina actually I think heard us talk mention it, and she's like, "Oh my god, why don't you tell me that." Butcher Box has chicken nuggets. Oh my god, that's like one of Max's favorite. Have you tried them? I haven't tried them yet. The (laughs) best. I listen. I swear to God, the best gluten free chicken nuggets I've ever had in my entire life. Yeah, they're bomb. Like the best. Yeah, they're really good. I couldn't believe that we had. Thought you're making fun of me right there. No, no, no. no, (laughs) Every time we go to like sushi, you get a chicken. No, no, they're really, they're really good. And I can't believe that (laughs) we are. I was ordering. (laughs) We were buying somebody else's chicken nuggets because I just didn't think that Butcher Box had chicken nuggets. And Katrina, oh yeah, I had no idea. And so now that's all. We, we get and so I got I got a little video of like us making them the other day and 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 got him to actually do like a better commercial so oh what is that oh butcher box are those your favorite they taste like really good That's fried great. chicken yeah. Like really, so you good. like air fry them? Like no, no they're already in the oven. You just heat them up oh, in the oh, oven. Oh, yeah, okay. we just throw them in the oven. Do them in the oven them. so they get kind of crispy. Yeah, they literally it tastes like like legit fried chicken and it's gluten-free sick they're in, like jessica no, they're and i ordered them originally for aurelius we now eat them ourselves like we just like, butcher hey, we box butcher time. box has truly really i mean I'm, I'm in for the price that you get because when you get yeah. stuff like that obviously in the grocery store you pay a, a much higher price so to, to get the, the quality of food that you get from them and deliver to your door like I'm, i've been oh see now you can order anybody can order them now Yes. So what they were, so cool. here's what happened. They were like a special thing, right? So somebody told me about it. Might have been you guys, because mm-hmm. you guys might have got them at one, one point. And I went on their site and I couldn't find them. They were only offered uh, as a special for new members. Now, of course, we have connection to Butcher Box. So I yeah. talked to I talked to our you know our, our people who who work with them and I said, Hey, get me the nuggets right now. I want to give me them out. nuggets. Katrina so went cra- some. Katrina went crazy the other day. I was going through our you know our, our credit card bill and stuff like that, and I'm always like, you know, I'm that I'm that husband. What's this charge for two hundred something? What's this? Charge? <laughs> yeah. so I don't know if anybody else in here is that <laughs> itemizing. Yeah, yeah, I'm so that guy, right? So so terrible. And I'm asking, there was like a three hundred some dollar charge to Butcher Box. I'm like, we get Butcher Box for free. What are we doing paying three hundred some bucks? But I guess they had some like crazy deal add ons. The add ons oh, get us. Yeah. So we have our, you know, we have a, we don't get it for free. We get a a lot of amount. All of us do right with the company, which is what are the, the add ons right now, Doug? Because I've seen before lobster tail on there. I've seen uh, uh, like like uh, lunch meats or whatever, where they call it charcuterie uh, oh, meats. Charcuterie meats? Oh, I haven't done that. Woo. You didn't know that? <laughs> I got a lot of catching up to do. I yeah, mean, there's all yeah. kinds of things you can add on. They've got pork carnitas, apple gouda sausages, pork sirloin, roasts, sweet and smoky salmon bites. Dang. All kinds of yeah, they, and they change them up. Things. They change them up. So you know, I bet you never even. Been I'm gonna have to go on there and then report back, dude, because charcuterie is like our thing that's like our family's thing oh dude. really yeah we just do of course it, it is so yeah, fancy cheese, 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 oh. cheese but but also the lunch meats and all that like you know just have that i i tend to like doing that because uh, i don't get as uh you know when you eat a big meal for lunch or something yeah. you get all heavy like why like is it doug that. you'll know this answer better than these guys probably i hope so uh, yeah what's the what's the big one that you could buy from costco and you just kind of shave off on it like meat what meat is that that's oh you- the like a prosciutto or this the um Iberico ham. 
it's uh, like yeah, it's huge. Like you can you, buy it. Yeah, massive. I think it's the Iberico or Iberico. And you can just so ham. what I what I, like you can just you just leave it out and it stays good. Yeah, like, I mean that that ham is amazing. It's too. preserved, dried. Yeah, oh, yeah that, that's dried, the Spanish right? the Spanish ver yeah. version of the ham. Yeah, they can't call it prosciutto because Italy's laws are hilarious. It has to be from a specific region. To be called that. Well, that's like isn't that how their wines, wines are too? Yeah, certain France. wines. You France does that with, yeah, with France, wines too. Yeah, isn't that the, funny? The yeah. You know what's funny? Like, they're I think it's cool. because they're such snobs about their food. <laughs> yeah. It actually has protected them from yeah. the processed food like revolution. I appreciate it. Yeah. I do too. I like that. It's it's legit protected. I, them. I like that. You yeah. know yeah. that's why. By the way, the GMO thing. It's not because G they think GMOs are unhealthy. It's because they're they're local farmers and whatever. They take so much pride and they yeah. have so much power. Yeah. So great though. that they said, "No, you can't no, do that." We've figured it out. We're going to leave it this way. Yeah, and yeah. it's our business, and this is our culture, and this is how we do it, or whatever. Right. You know, it's pretty. It's pretty funny. Pretty yeah. funny stuff. Who's got the shout out today? Justin. Yeah. So okay, where is it? It's old time strongman. Old time dot strongman. So on great here, page. yeah, you just get like really cool information about all these guys from back in the day and gals at uh, which is another cool thing I, I i never knew about all these like old time kind of strong women yes uh that that were there and like you know it's a lot of times it was like they're they're presented in in some of those like circus like mm -hmm. acts and things because it was so rare you know to see like a woman that was like very built and like had defined muscles and it's just cool to see that even back then like there was like some interest there uh, with some of these badass women. Yeah, you know, I, I like them because I, I think, first of all, I think that era is phenomenal or is excellent. Chuck Norris in there? Yeah, why was he there? <laughs> That's random. What? Okay, so yeah, they'll throw in some. <laughs> yeah. So I, I love I love that random era ones. because uh, a lot of the wisdom that we know now well, came was before from all the studies and before supplements yeah. and before. But so if you were a female back then and you were strength training, like you talk about uh, like going counter to society and thinking for yourself and yeah. being like a real independent strong woman like that was because you know first of all almost no men lifted weights back then women it was it was laughed at so, so i have a random right. fact for you guys which i thought was really cool so uh you two are so much more into this than i am like i didn't know anybody from that era and i've you know just hanging around you guys i've i've heard you drop names and Hackenschmidt is yeah. one of the names yeah. that I've heard you guys talk about as like one of the like most epic like strongmen back of mm -hmm. you know in the what is it called the golden this is not the golden this is golden the bronze era, era. Bronze or era. bronze, era. It's era. The yeah, bronze yeah. era right yeah. so from the bronze era I just so happened to be watching a Netflix documentary on something totally different than this it was like a um, trade show type of it was something so different and they just so bright they brought up Hackenschmidt he was the first person to ever wear a robe into the ring yeah. he started that tradition for boxers oh, wow. and, and wrestlers and fighters that come out in a robe nobody had ever come out in a bathrobe before he was the first guy to do that and set that trend going forward yeah back in those became the thing for back sure. in those days this these strength athletes uh, a significant percentage of them also wrestled mm -hmm. and they would do an american style of submission wrestling called catch wrestling catch wrestling by the way if you do jujitsu Look up cat. You probably already do because it's more popular now. But look up catch wrestling and their techniques, and you'll learn some stuff that you can use in jujitsu that you maybe catch your your well, jujitsu practitioners what, off guard with. That's what what's his face was why he was so dominant in in MMA was um uh why can I not think of his name right now? What does he look like o older guy? And he came back and he came back for to win the heavyweight title when he and he's not a oh couture yes yeah, yeah, Randy, Randy couture Randy couture yeah. Yeah. thank you Randy couture yeah Randy couture yeah so I just came up with Carl Gotch uh Hackenschmidt they were all catch wrestlers um uh Abraham Lincoln did catch wrestling. <laughs> That's what I hear, way. dude. Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. And they, they, they're masters of the, what they call the double wrist, uh, double wrist lock, which is a, or figure four lock, which is also known as a Kimura lock. So mm. for grapplers, check it out. All right. Check this out. There's a company called joy mode that makes a product that helps improve sexual performance and satisfaction. In a nutshell, these are compounds that improve blood flow. Okay. By the way, this is also a great supplement to take before your workout if you want to get a better pump. So you can get a, get a pump down there and get a pump up here in the biceps. Anyway, great product. Go check them out. Go to usejoymode.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump at checkout and get 20% off your first order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Arison from Wisconsin. Hey, Arison, how can we help you? Hey, so I just want to start off by sharing, I really appreciate not only 
the much needed, honest, and nuanced information you guys provide, but also the personal way in which you present it. I've learned so much and gotten a lot of laughs, especially in the early episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, so I remember you. You've been to the studio before. I have. Yep. Yeah. I came to the live event in December. Yeah. All awesome. right. All right. Good deal. Well, cool. How can we help you? So I tend to get distracted on details. So I'm going to start with the question and then I'll give the details after. I'm wondering how you would program training and nutrition throughout the year if you try to peak at the same time annually to kind of see the progress that you're making year over year. So I'm not a competitor. I never plan to become one, but I do like to have a plan for throughout the year so that on 4th of July, I can kind of look my best bringing a new better and better physique every year, just like you would do for a show. So it's a way to see my progress year over year instead of just focusing on a, sm a small window of time or just focusing on the scale or smaller metrics. But I feel like I end up in the same spot every year. So I'm wondering if I just need to change it up. Um, I usually build from September to about April, cut in May and June, and then just kind of maintain throughout the summer. Programming has run all my apps programs for about the last year and a half. I hit 10K steps per day, and I add in a three-mile run on NFL Sundays, thanks to Adam's tip on getting movement in before the game start and just maintaining some baseline cardio. So I'm wondering what you would recommend to do differently. Yeah, this is actually a really good question. Are are you how long have you been exercising consistently? Uh, period. So I know you said maps for the past year and a half, but were you working out a lot before that too? Yeah, so I've always been generally active, playing sports and just, you know, getting movement in. But in terms of hitting the gym like five days a week, every single week, it's been about three years. Okay. You're pretty fit and you've been doing this for a long time. So to see lots of progress year over year, um, I want to make sure you have realistic expectations because most of the progress someone's going to make when they start working out pretty consistently will happen in the first two or three years. After that, the progress is quite incremental. Um, now, strategy-wise, with your what you're doing with your diet, where you're saying you're trying to build, let me see, from September to April, and then you cut May and June, and then you maintain, I like that. So I'm assuming you're going on a bulk or a small bulk during those build phases, and then the cut is obviously when you cut your calories, and then you bring them up a little bit to maintain for a couple months. Is that accurate? Yep. So I maintain about 2,400. Um, thanks to you guys, I've come up from about 1500 to 2400 for maintenance. So I tend to go up to about 2600 to bulk and then I cut down to about 2000 or 2100. Okay, cool. And then when you say peak and look your, or, you know, be your best, are you talking about athletic performance or I'm assuming you're talking about how you look like the, the, the yeah. visual the aesthetics? Part. More aesthetics. Yeah. Okay. So diet wise on point. I like that. Um, and we can get into more details with that in here in just a second. When it comes to the training, it doesn't make that big of a difference, except I would say the programming that you would want closer to the 4th of July, which is when you're trying to peak, I think should be more of a bodybuilding focused, you know, maybe bring up weak body parts type of routine. So like maps aesthetic, maps split, map symmetry would even be good leading up to that just so that, cause what you, in order to pee, especially after a certain period of time, you've been training for a long time, initial stages, you just want to develop your body overall. After a while, if you look at, cause I think the athlete that you can look at for the most wisdom on this, and I don't think you should do everything that they do, but the athlete that is most comparable is the bodybuilder that competes, let's say one or two times a year. And what bodybuilders do is after a while, in order to improve their bodies, they stop trying to build everything all the time because it's just, it's just a, you're not going to do that. After a few years of being consistent, you're not going to keep building the whole body. But what they do, the smart ones, is they find areas of the body to focus on and bring up those weaker areas. And the way to do that is by taking volume away from other parts of your body. So the way to improve for the first three years, general strength, general muscle, general fitness. But then after that, it's really about finding those areas of your body you really want to focus on placing more emphasis on those and taking away from other areas to compensate type of deal. So the training leading up to that doesn't make a huge difference. But then when you get closer to that reveal, I like a program like maybe maps aesthetic with the focus sessions, for example, to really focus and hone in on, on some of those areas that maybe year after year you want to kind of work on. And I, you know, you could pick the same areas or focus on different areas each time. That's that's exactly how I do it. I, I would go, I would wor work backwards, right? So if, if the, let's say, you know, 4th of July was the weekend I'm trying to peak for, uh, 
I would work it backwards. So I'd run maps aesthetic leading up to that. So it ended on that day. Right. And then the program before that, I like something that is either strength based or functional. So, and then the rest of the year, it would look something like this. And you can pick and choose between all of our programs is I would, I would run things like maps, anabolic slash strong slash power lift with interrupting that with like a maps performance. So I address mobility stuff like flip flopping it. So like what a year would look like would be like maps, anabolic, then uh, maps performance, then say maps strong, then like a maps performance, then like a maps power lift, then like a maps aesthetic, something like that, where the I'm I'm getting I'm trying to build strength. And then throughout that whole year, to Sal's point about addressing like how bodybuilders kind of address this is even when I'm going through maps performance, maps strong, these other programs that aren't necessarily for the peak or the show, I'm still trying to address my, you know, imbalances or the, my, my lagging body parts per se. So I'm, I'm going to slightly customize map strong, slightly customize maps anabolic, or like, for example, in maps anabolic, my trigger sessions are going to be focused on my weak areas, right? So throughout the year, I'm going to be kind of addressing those weak areas consistently just by making sure I put a little more focus on that. Um, but I would alternate programs from a like a strength based program with a more functional based program leading all the way up until I hit maps aesthetic for the final 12 weeks going into my mm -hmm. peak, something like that. And then within the program, as far as diet is concerned, I would be in a, you know, maintenance surplus for most of the time. And then I would interrupt it with a, you know, one to two, maybe three week cut sometimes then back into a bulk slash maintenance the only time that I would run a longer cut would be for maps aesthetic heading into the, what I'm trying to peak. Arison, um, what does your body weight and body fat percentage at the end of that bulk season? And then what body fat percentage and body weight are you typically hitting come 4th of July? I want to see what the, what the difference is. It normally doesn't change much. Um, usually at the end of the bulk, it's about 26, 27% at like 115. And then during the cut, usually gets down to about 23, 24% at about 110. Okay. I would like to see you bulk a little bit more aggressively um, is, is what I'd like to see. Let's see if we can, and you can let the body fat climb up a little more, but really push the calories and get as strong as possible. I would focus on a lot of strength um, in that period. And then as far as the cut is concerned, this is going to be a two-year process. Uh, the first time around, I wouldn't try to be as aggressive as you, you know, maybe getting down to 23%, but then the following year you can go ahead and go for it. And that'll give you a little bit of space to gain some, some muscle. Cause that's really what we're looking at here. What we're really looking at here, Arison is, uh, there's two ways you can change your appearance come 4th of July. One, get leaner than you did the year before, which you could do. But once you start to get to low twenties, high teens, it starts to get a bit gnarly. Or two, what I think, which would be a better approach, is to put on a little bit of muscle that sticks around when you get into the cut. So you might have to stretch this out for a couple of years to kind of make that happen. How tall are you? I'm about 5'4". Okay. And how's your strength? How's like your squat and deadlift? I mean, give me an idea of where, where you're sitting. So I just finished power laps, uh, sorry, power lifts last week. So my one rep max turned out to be 184 squat and dead and 115 for bench. Yeah, not bad at all. But yeah, I would be a more aggressive during the bulk for strength. Now, don't be crazy and sloppy with it, but maybe take your calories and your protein up a little bit higher and see if you could get those numbers to, to go up. And really, that's where you're going to get. So we're, when it comes to like bodybuilding, for example, the big mistake I think most bodybuilders make or competitors make is they think it's all about the pre-contest. But really, if you're too aggressive with the pre-contest, then you really screw yourself. Most of the, the the best competitors, the people who do the best, are the ones that are really consistent in the off-season, where they build quality muscle and they're able to keep it when they go through that cut kind of phase. And again, I'm referring to bodybuilders because that's similar to that's the most similar to what you're looking to do. So I would maybe be a little bit more aggressive with the bulk and see if we can get you even stronger than than you've been in the past. And if you can progress each bulking season over the previous bulking season, um, then you're doing, you're doing pretty damn well. Then you're trending upward. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Normally in the fall, I've been running like maps cardio or maps performance. Um, cause I have those runs in there as well. I mean, it's once a week, so it's not all that much. And then I've been doing 
kind of a strength based program fall, I'm sorry, winter and early spring and then cutting. So I think I'll just switch it around and focus a little more on building. Yeah. It sounds like. Yeah. And it sounds like you can push the calories a little more than you have in the past. I mean, what's, what's, which is great. Cause it's not normally the advice that we're giving people. Most people tend to do the sloppy bulk or they overconsume. It seems like you're probably on the, the lighter side. You, I mean, if you're only fluctuating five to 10 pounds, uh, in the entire year, a uh, difference of off season and peaking, that's very minimal. So you could afford to probably, which maybe the most challenging part might be the psychological part, right? When you're going through the bulk right. and you know, you're in a surplus yeah. is, you know, you're probably going to put on a little bit of body fat. You're going to put on some weight on the scale is being okay with that. Like, and knowing that, Hey, that's the goal right now. The goal right now is to build strength. I'm going to increase a little bit of size, not a big deal. Uh, so then you can then reveal it in your in your cut. But if you never really push that or get that get to build that muscle up, then and you just keep coming back to a cut. And by the way, this happens to a lot of competitors. Like one of the things I share with the guys all the time, I would I would recognize really quick with my peers is they get to a place with their body and then it's they they go through this bulk and then cut season just to reveal the same physique. And a lot of that is because they would go too aggressively with the bulk. They're not focusing on their programming, wasn't dialed in. So a lot of this is like you making sure that in the off season, you do a really good job of building as much muscle as you possibly can. When it comes down to the maps aesthetic, to the cut part, you're just revealing the hard work you did in the off season. There's nothing really you're doing at that point in a calorie deficit. You're really just revealing what you did in the off season. And if you don't allow yourself to push your weight up a little bit more and put on muscle, you're going to be revealing the same physique every year. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> it seems like based off of what you guys are recommending that there's a, kind of a basis of a formula leading up to the peaking part, but there's a lot of flexibility for you sort of like in the preceding months to experiment with a lot of different programs that, that are going to address like a lot of different moves you probably haven't done a lot of different muscles that we're kind of trying to highlight. Uh, so I think that, you know, you could really like experiment and see whatever, you know, sort of option that's available makes sense for you kind of in, in maybe the winter months and, you know, focus on strength and, uh, you know, obviously feed yourself to that point where we're trying to build muscle, but then the, the reveal itself is probably where you're going to want to stick something kind of like a formula. Yeah. I, and I'll, I'll look, I'm going to add a few things here. Um, one is that your approach, your year long approach, um, is excellent because what you're doing, whether you realize it or not, is you're creating kind of this lifelong balanced strength training routine by switching to different programs, by slightly changing your goal from mobility to strength to getting leaner to stamina. This is great because this, this type of training is going to serve you very well for the rest of your life. It's going to avoid a lot of the pitfalls a lot of people fall into, like overuse injuries or imbalances. It's going to allow you to continue to slowly progress because you're going to be bringing up, you know, weak areas or areas of your body or performance that maybe other people might not focus on because they're so single-minded. Um, so that's excellent. Uh, the, the second thing I'd like to add is to be patient and enjoy the process uh, because if if you're, and you're young, so you can still do this, but what you don't want to do is keep pushing the the visual appearance every single year because that's going to make, it's going to take away the real value of what you're doing, which is mm -hmm. the entire process of the whole year of going through these different phases. And I'm sure you're enjoying training different ways and, and, you know, focusing on different things, whether it be strength or mobility or, or stamina. So I would focus more on that. And also, you know, performance improvements, although those are not infinite either are better metrics than visual ones anyway. I mean, if you get really lean, you could have like a day where you're just off with your hormones or you're bloated and you might not look as good as you did the year before, even though you have a little bit more muscle and you're probably leaner. So I like performance, uh, you know, for, for that standpoint. And then the last thing I'll add is this, this is very true. This is true for both men and women, but especially for women. When women have a good amount of muscle on their body, they look they look better at higher body fat percentages than women with less muscle. So you'll see a woman who's got good strength be 28% body fat, and she looks leaner than a woman with less, way less muscle who's at 23% body fat because the muscle adds shape and sculpt. And so what ends up happening is the 28% body fat percentage woman with more muscle just looks like she's got really nice curves. So keep that in mind when you're doing your bulk. I wouldn't get too hung up on the body fat percentage. We don't want to go crazy, but you know, get get stronger, build that muscle. That's that's where you're going to see the progress. Okay, that made sense. Yeah, it has been helpful like power lift was just a really great mental shift in terms of I've never really tried to do one rep max before. Awesome. So that was just kind of fun. 
And performance, I mean, I play volleyball once a week, and admittedly, it's beach volleyball in a men's net, so I'm useless at hitting. Mm. But on the rare occasion that I get to try, it was really fun to improve my vertical and that kind of thing just as a side effect. Awesome. Do you have MAPS Anabolic Advanced, by the way? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you have all of our programs? Pretty much. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. We're going to get you a new one here. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got, we'll some, we got something coming out. If yeah. you can you remember when we come out, we'll give it to you. We'll say, I want to send you something, so. Yeah. Okay, I, thank I you so what, much. Can't thanks. say what it is, though. It's yeah. a surprise, but you'll like Fair it. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Harrison. Thank you. You got it. That's a good approach. That's a great I love approach. It. Yeah. I mean, she's shifting through different modalities and goals, and I think that's a great long-term approach to fitness because a lot of people would just be so hyper-focused on mm -hmm. one thing that everything they do is towards that. And end up they end up getting hurt or they end up burning their bodies out. But what she's doing, she's cycling through all the different programs and changing nutrition uh, mm -hmm. by seasons. Uh, that's that's a great way to keep yourself healthy. Yeah, I was thinking too. Like uh, symmetry is a great program for kind of like going back and and is sort of your north star. Like what's uh, what, how's my body been benefiting from this? Maybe where there are some deficits that I can focus in on and and kind of iron those out along this journey because she's going to be applying new programming like each year. It sounds like at least one uh, to, you know, to try it out and see how her body responds. And I would think that's always a good follow-up right after that to kind of see totally. you know, where you're at. Yeah. After listening to her and giving all that advice that we gave, I think it's a simpler way to kind of sum it all up to me after hearing everything is she does a great job already cycling through programs, cycling through diet, she keeps herself in a very manageable place. It, I think actually she just hasn't allowed herself to put more weight on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think just doing- That's why I said the bulk. Yeah, so just yeah. doing that alone, I think is going to give her this, you know, a, a, a better reveal mm -hmm. the next year of, of going through this. I think everything else she's doing is pretty spot on. I just know sometimes I have clients that struggle with the, you know, they, they got themselves in a good, and by the way too, there's nothing wrong with just staying there. But if you ask me a question like, hey, I'm trying to improve, to progress, yeah. Yeah, progress mm -hmm. and move my physique, then you're going to get advice that way. I think that she's got a very healthy relationship with exercise. She looks really good. Like, mm -hmm. But, I mean, you ask me a question like that, I'm going to go, okay, well, here's how oh, we go about it. Two biggest mistakes with bulking is the person who's insecure about being too skinny, they over bulk. And the person who's insecure about being too fat, they under bulk. Yeah. There is a nice sweet spot with a bulk. And if you're going below or above it, you're just not going to reap all those benefits. And it sounds like she was just going to Agreed. Too low. Our next caller is Lucy from Virginia. Hi, Lucy. How can we help you? Wow. Hi, guys. Thank you so... <laughs> this is crazy. Thank you so much for having me on today. Um, for the first time in my 46 years, I have been working on getting stronger awesome. rather than skinnier. All, all thanks right. to you. Um, your content is accessible logical and incredibly helpful. Uh, I know you probably feel like you repeat yourselves constantly, but please keep doing it because us dummies over here really need to hear it a few times before we catch on. So thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome. Uh, my question. Um, I haven't been lifting long. I found you guys in September of 2022. I started with anabolic performance and now I'm in phase two of symmetry. I have both a ballet, I was a professional ballet dancer, and um, now I'm a yoga teacher and practitioner. Um, so I'm very interested in getting the right technique in my lifts before I overload myself too much. Um, so on that note, I can't seem to get below 90 degrees, if that, in my squat, in my barbell squat. Um, I'm very mobile in all three zones. I did the prime tests, passed all of those. But I still feel like I'm stuck either in my hips or my ankles and my back seems to round a bit. Um, when we teach yoga and when I was a ballet dancer, we often talk about people, different anatomies have been having different sort of centers of gravity. And so what that means to me is longer femurs, easier to do certain things, but harder to do other things and vice versa. So I just didn't know if without excusing myself, I don't want any excuses, but I didn't know if in certain anatomies just couldn't go ass to grass. Um, cause I really, I'm coveting that for some reason. I just know, uh, I should be able to do it. And I feel like I can't. Um, I also should note, I've had both of my hips replaced total hip replacements. And so I don't know if that's mm. doing it. I, I feel like I've restored most of my mobility. Um, 
since then, but you know, I've just never done this kind of um, fitness before. So I don't know if that's holding me up. Yeah. Wow. How low can you go? Have you had your heels elevated when you squat? I did. In fact, I heard you guys the other day on your podcast talking about that. Um, so I tried it and it, it still felt, um, I don't think it's my ankles in other words. So I, um, if I don't, if I don't load myself, if I just go down, I can go all the way down, but I can't come back up. And I don't think I could have any weight on me to go all the way down. So that's kind of where I'm wondering what the next steps would be. If there's something, I know there's something I'm missing. Yeah, actually, th This is a great question. Yeah. Uh, so I've trained a few um, dancers who uh, were very, very high level. And when I remember when I first trained them, it posed a completely different challenge for me as a trainer, because until then, usually what we encounter as trainers are people who just don't have the flexibility to do certain exercises. Yeah, it sounds like strength more than yeah. Yeah, and, and now exactly. when I would train, now when I train these dancers, they had all the flexibility in the world, but they lacked the strength uh, to provide the stability. Remember, mobility is 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 range of motion plus strength and stability, right? It's not just range of motion and it's not just strength. You got to have both. So, but you did throw in a wrench here, which is the hip replacements. Yeah. Okay, so that's a bit yeah. of a, that's a wrench. So let me let me address the question as if you didn't have hip replacement and then just for people listening and then for you, I'll have something a little different. So if there was no hip replacement, um, I would say this is probably entirely a strength issue being a professional, uh, you know, doing ballet professionally. My cousin does it. I'm very okay. familiar with the world of ballet. Like uh, flexibility is, uh, I mean, it's incredible at that level. And on top of it, yoga. So you've probably got great flexibility uh, I would say it's a strength issue, 100. percent I would work on strength. I would use no weight. I would try to create tension mm -hmm. in those lower positions, and then support okay. yourself coming all the way up. So what I would do is I would go down as low as you could with no weight, or as low as you felt control over with mm -hmm. no weight. Okay. So in other words, if going all the way down means you can't come back up without helping yourself, then I wouldn't do that. I would go just to the point where you feel it's a challenge, create some tension and then come up. Now you have hip replacement, both sides. So this is a wrench because that can limit your range of motion. When they do a replacement on hips uh, in particular, they don't, they're not like replacing, uh, it's not like creating a, a, like the same thing you had before. There are limitations to replacements that you wouldn't necessarily find with a, with a natural hip, for example. So okay. I don't think you should test uh, your depth or range of motion uh, aggressively at all. I would play with it, but I'd be very, very careful. And and then to add another thing, when somebody is very flexible, um, but they're working on strength, usually what I do is I limit the range of motion anyway. So when I, if I took somebody who had just, just hyper flexibility, I would not have them trained to their end ranges of motion because their lack of stability was so bad or the strength was so not, it didn't match the flexibility to the point where if we went to end ranges of motion, I am dramatically increasing risk of injury. So what I would do with those people is I would cut their range of motion just short and try and create connection and strength within those. So uh, to, to sum it up, you're, you're at no dis. I don't think you're, I think you're fine going at 90 degrees. I think split stance exercises would be great for you. Mm -hmm. I think hip thrusting would be amazing for you. Um, I think those would be really good for you. And when you squat, there's nothing wrong with going down to 90 degrees and coming up. And then, like I said, you can play with ranges of motion, but I would do so with very little to no weight and go just outside of where you think you have control and nothing deeper than that. And once you master that, then you can try it again. But listen to your body too. If it feels like your hips are locking or mm -hmm. like you have to do weird things to get deeper, mm -hmm. then that's the joint. That's not necessarily strength or, or muscle. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's strength, stability, like all that, especially with the hips now trying to relearn a lot of like uh, be able to respond appropriately laterally and, and with rotation. And so, you know, if you could spend as much time as you can with body weight exercises, even if you go like split stance, if you go single leg, if you go assisted uh, single leg. So if I get the uh, uh, suspension trainer involved where I can actually like kind of like very, very incrementally like decrease in, in terms of my depth and then and try as, as much as I can to produce that kind of tension throughout your body and, and squeeze and drive your way up and just keep continuously kind of like working on that. 
uh, and also like lateral movements, like uh, caustic squats and, and uh, you know, lateral lunges and, um, and, and also doing things a bit with rotation. So step up with the rotation and um, just mm-hmm. kind of working through that entire process of like multiplanar type of work to, to re-educate those hips on how to respond appropriately. So that way you feel like you can get them to respond and brace and you can feel some tension actually like being produced again. Um, and then box squats, you know, at, at a height where you feel comfortable the most to begin with. So that 90 degrees, whatever that is, you know, you're going to start in that bottom position, you're going to brace and you're going to try and drive up. And that's like your entire focus is like, you know, generating force and being able to get up out of the hole. Did, did I hear you say that you're on phase two of map symmetry right now? Yes. Yeah, so I know all of these things you're saying. I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> guys, all of these terms. Yeah, this but is... Yeah, I haven't yet done um, the five by five, I guess, whatever's at the end. So that's kind of why I wanted to yeah, find all. It'll, it'll be exciting to see, cause I think that's the right program for you. So you, you, you did the, you, you chose the right program for what we're talking about. So hopefully you're going to get a lot of these benefits just, just to circle back. I, I want to, the two things that Justin said that I, I, I was going to go this direction anyways, which is I love the suspension trainer and basically doing a pistol squat, you mm-hmm. know, holding on to suspension trainer. And so allowing it to, you know, go down to where you're comfortable, work out, get strong in that spot, and then just slowly challenging it a little bit deeper with one leg and body weight at a time with the support, I think would be a great way to build strength there. The other way uh, with the box squats. So I've done this with clients in a similar situation where we get like a really low box. And then I get a bunch of those foam pads that I stack up and then we, we start right where they're really comfortable. We work there for a couple of weeks. Then I pull one foam pad out. So now they're getting another inch by inch. Yeah. You know, inch mm-hmm. by, so now they're getting another two to four inches deeper Then I pull the yep. next foam pad out. And so we just slowly work our way backwards like that. The combination of that with the, you know, suspension trainer, pistol squats with support, I think are, are great ways, but we have a lot of unilateral work that's in symmetry. So it'd be interesting to see just from what we've programmed in there, what kind of benefits when you, you see also. When you do a split stance, you can go all the way down, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So, okay. So, you know, this wouldn't be an issue if you did this. If you, when you did your barbell squats, you stopped at 90 degrees and right. you loaded it. And then your full range of motion comes with your split stance exercises. There's no problem with that. Uh, I like loading hip thrusts. Uh, a lot for someone like you. A hip thrust is a shorter range of motion, really strengthens the glutes, really strengthens that that uh, that that support for the hips. Um, and there's nothing wrong with loading a squat to just 90 degrees with these uh, under the circumstances that you're kind of communicating. Because the issue is really the wrench is the hip replacement. If there was no hip right. replacement, this would be a little bit more straightforward. But when they okay. replace a joint, um, it's it's not designed to be like well they 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 don't design it that way. It's there's a there's a point that the joint isn't going to f- move any further. In fact, they'll tell you this when you get the replacement. They'll say you can't rotate more than this. You can't. So what you don't want to do is push past that and think, well, yeah. I got to go deeper um, because you could cause yourself um, some real problems. But there's like you have no issues with flexibility. Obviously, you you have no, so this is all strength. And there's nothing, okay. there's nothing wrong with building strength, going down to 90 degrees, and then working on range of motion with other exercises that you feel more comfortable it's with. It's such so- a good point. If you're if you're getting full range of motion in in lunges and split stance stuff, you're addressing the the thing that we would be concerned about. Yeah. If everything was shortened and you weren't being able to go down full range in other movements, then there'd be an issue there that we'd be con- concerned about. But you're still addressing full range of motion with other movements. So the only other thing would be like the the benefits that you get of a full deep squat is okay you're going to build your ass probably a little bit more which to hip the thrust. hip thrust point that Sal's saying oh like, yeah okay so okay that's I mean that that's there the one go. thing that maybe you miss out on because you're going ninety degrees in your squat you're going to be more quad dominant in that squat than you are going to get glutes from it but then oh if you know if we're talking about aesthetics now and building the butt more then I would push you in the direction of what Sal's saying, which is we would focus on loading the hip thrust and that's where you're going to get that glute okay. dominant work. How do you feel with a really, what's your stance when you squat, by the way? Well, yeah. So um, initially I was very parallel because that's what we do in yoga, right? It's right. chair pose. So then, but then I, I watched videos and and now I'm wider and, and I have my toes pointed out more and that feels better. Yeah, I good. can go lower. Good. Yeah. I want you to go by feel because you're you're in your you're not like the average person, Lucy. A lot of people call us, and they've not done all the 
work and exercise and movement stuff like you have. And so um, I don't necessarily get, I always tell people to listen to their body, but I want you to really trust your body because you're in your body. Like you've been in your body for a long time through your training. So if you watch a video or you hear us say something and it doesn't feel right to you, I want you to listen to that. Like you did with the parallel squat. Like that didn't feel right to you. You, you modified your form and technique and it felt better. So really listen to you, uh, to your body. But yeah, it's, there's nothing wrong with just doing 90 degree squats and getting stronger there. There's nothing wrong with that at all. As long as you do all the other stuff, you're, you're totally fine. Waiting in the wings after symmetry, I have anabolic advanced and power lift. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have a recommendation for what order or should I like return to um, performance in between those two or? No, not after symmetry. After symmetry, I think you're good. I would go anabolic advanced. But uh, then after that, I would go performance. Yeah. I, I okay. like to, I like to have, especially with my clients, that it's like overall health, longevity, strength. We're not like very specific. I love to rotate a strength based program with a more functional based program. And so, and I would put, you know, performance and symmetry as our more, you know, functional based programs. Like I would put that in that category. So every other program I would want to be one of those to kind of interrupt the strength focus. Yeah. Now, now I know you didn't bring up diet, but I want to ask you because, um, uh, the, the ballet world is got some of the biggest challenges when it comes to um, relationships with food. It's very, very, uh, I mean, it's just, it's one of those spaces that it's just quite common. How are you with nutrition and eating in a way to fuel your body for strength gains? Is that a challenge or are you, are you pretty, you got a good grasp of it? Um, it's a challenge. Okay. I, um, yeah, I mean, um, I've really just had a, um, tough time with food. Most of my, from about, oh, I guess I was anorexic when I was 13 through dance. And that's actually why I stopped professional dancing. Um, and probably very likely why I have hip replacements because I am very, I just, I went right in from ballet to college swimming to marathon running to yoga. Yeah. And it's, mm -hmm. I wish I could say it's yin yoga, but it's not. Mm. <laughs> so, um, so I do, um, but after, I promise, after listening to you guys, I'm um, tracking my protein. I um, get body weight and protein. Um, so I'm really, I'm much more cognizant at least of what I'm putting in my body. Do you feel uncomfortable when you eat in a way to fuel strength? Like, do you feel like, uh, like I'm eating, Oh man, I'm eating too much. This doesn't feel right. No. Okay, good. And what I've done. Um, so I kind of hit a tipping point when, and it was very serendipitous the way I found you guys, because I was, um, I had just, my body had just sort of said, we're done. And I was walking, um, cause I couldn't run cause of my hip replacements, I was walking upwards of probably 35,000 steps a day. So, um, I've cut way back on that, um, and increased my food and have, so I basically kind of done a reverse diet, um, but by cutting way back on my activity versus my food, although I have increased my, my protein as well. Good. And I feel great. I mean, I, I'm sleeping better. My husband likes me better. <laughs> um, I'm just a generally, I think I'm a better mother. So um, I'm really focused. My, I have a teenage daughter, so I'm very aware that she's watching me. Um, so I'm really trying to, I'm really trying for me and for her and for everyone to, uh, to be better, just be better. Yeah. I would I, try, try doing a little bit of an aggressive bulk. You're, 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 that would help you with the strength so much. Um, I think it would blow your mind. So you, I mean, you look really, would you, are you, your body fat percentage looks like it's in the teens. I would like, okay. So I would, I would, if you tested it, I would, I would let your body fat get up to the, the mid twenties. And I think you'll see your best strength gains and health gains, uh, in that percentage, but I would do a, a nice aggressive bulk. Go ahead and push the calories a little bit. I mean, you can eat healthy, but push the calories. Not just proteins. You're hitting your protein targets, but go for the carbs and the fats, especially the fats, and watch okay. what happens. You'll get more out of that than you will out of the you know tweaking your programming. I mean, that'll make the biggest difference right there. Lucy, I'm going to have Doug put you in our private forum um, just so we can, we can be there for support and you can reach out to us uh, as you go through this journey. And then I'd also like to see the squat. Um, we, we did a lot of speculating and, yeah, you know, good point. 
sometimes when I see somebody move, uh, there's something that's that jumps out at me that it could be a small tweak or I could help out. And so I, I, I would love that too, is just for you to get on there and show me a body weight squat so I could kind of see your movement um, okay. and see if we can continue to add add value to what's going on with you. Okay. Thank you guys so much. You got All right. It. All right Thanks for right. calling in. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. So uh, for people listening, she said that, you know, her, her eating. I'm so glad you went there. Yeah. yeah because I, okay. So I know you, I, I know you went the, the doctor safe route with the hip thing, but I, I think you hit it more on the head with nutrition and strength. Yeah. I think that she just is not very strong mm -hmm. in that, in that position. And she hasn't fed her body right. ever. So she's been heavily mm -hmm. focused on flexibility her whole life. Uh, for the first time ever, she's trying to back squat ass to grass. She knows she has the flexibility because she can probably put her head legs over her head. She's so flexible. But when she gets down, she can get down in that position. She can't get out. So what tells me it's not the hip replacement is the, her ability to get down comfortably. Yeah, I like you. I like that you said show us the squat so we could kind of see because then you'll tell you'll be able oh, to notice. Yeah. The, oh, that's the hip joint. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. You'll yeah. tell if that's limit. And she didn't give or she didn't really communicate anything to me that made me go like, oh, something's going on in her hip area that's limiting her from going down there she can go all the way down has a hard time getting out that tells me it's a strength issue and it's then, damn near impossible to, to feel strong and adequate when you're underfed right yeah. so that's a, it's a great uh, uh insight there in terms of like you know being in that state for for a long time like yeah that's gonna be real challenging yeah. to, if, to build if you if you're a professional ballet dancer and you don't have an eating disorder it's rare it that's is. how that's how yeah. common it is in that space, and they start young. They start as, as you know, real young, I've and they heard go that to their about teens. Some gymnastic events as well. Yeah, you know, it's, with and, young and girls. And what happens? You're so underfed that you actually give yourself osteoporosis or joint degeneration because you can't feel your body, even with all that exercise, even with all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You're so underfed that your body uh, starts to break down. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll need to see because again, to be fair, like I have trained a few osteopaths and they've told, talked to me about joint replacements and they're like, look, these things are not made right. to have like the range of motion that, and so you always wanted to be careful. Right. But, um, but yeah, I think if she fed herself, she'd be like, holy, I mean, she's already doing more of it now and she's noticing all these benefits. Mm -hmm. It's probably not enough though. I bet you if she pushed it a little more. Oh yeah. No, you, you know. hit it on the head. Like, I mean, somebody like that would get so much benefit for actually for and it's probably hard for her to hear this, but to put some fat on. That's it, why I said, put, that's exactly put, why I said. Put some body fat on. Yes. Put 10 pounds, which probably sounds like so much. That'll be the healthiest thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I actually think when she does something, does that, I think you'll see the strength go up uh, in those areas. And then I think coming out of the hole from the squat. Look, to that point, I, I've, I wor I've worked with people like this and they want it, they're, they, they reach a point where like, okay, I'm comfortable gaining weight so long as it's just muscle. And I remember working with, fun this is early in my career, I worked with functional medicine practitioners. Like, no, they need to gain body fat. Mm -hmm. Like, they can gain muscle, yeah. that's fine. There's a healing effect. They got to put body fat on. Yeah. So I had clients where Especially literally the target was to get up to this body fat. And then when we did, it was like magic. The right. hormones balanced and everything Especially worked out. Especially as a right. woman. Right? Especially yeah. as a woman. Especially as a woman. Yes. So I, I I really think that's we're heading in the right direction with that conversation. Again, like you said, I'd like to see this squad. That's the reason why I asked for it. Um, because I, I have a, a sneaky suspicion that it's less to do with the hips, even though that's the right mm -hmm. way to be safe to, to to communicate to her. But I have a feeling it's just it's really a strength thing. And even when she said, she, I mean, she's since the show she's moving in the right direction. She cut back activity. She probably cut it in half, which she needed to do yeah. for sure. But then, how much more calories are we really eating? You know, right. so mm -hmm. then we really still need to feed the body more. So we'll see. Our next caller is Jackson from Florida. What's up, Jackson? How can we help you? Hey guys, how are you? Thanks for taking the call. You I'm actually it. calling from inside a cruise ship, so uh, I bought oh, the internet hey. package just for this. Oh, cool. <laughs> All right. right on. Hey, um, so my question was, uh, is kind of based off of uh, the conversation you had with Ben Greenfield, uh, the peptides. And I feel like I'm pretty fitness literate. I've been doing fitness uh, since I was like 15, um, 32 now. But I'm starting to get injuries, uh, some knee injuries, uh, lower back injuries. And I know, I'll say zero about peptides. So that conversation really intrigued me, but I don't know where to start with those, but it seems like something that could really help me. Peptides are a remarkable space. Uh, now they're not going to, they're not going to replace lifestyle. So diet exercise, um, and they're not going to replace 
balancing out your hormones. Those are bigger, bigger rocks. So let's say you had low testosterone, you know, uh, and you had to um, use uh, exogenous testosterone to bring it up. That would be a bigger game changer. But peptides are pretty wild. Uh, it's an it's an interesting space. They've been around for actually a long time, which I was informed of not that long ago when I first started kind of diving in. Some of them can raise growth hormone levels to more youthful levels, and then you'll reap the benefits of that. Some of them accelerate healing. BPC-157 is anecdotally, yeah. like people are just like, this stuff is remarkable. I remember Adam, when he tore his Achilles, used it, and he couldn't believe how quickly he recovered uh, whenever he used it. So it's a it's a remarkable space, but this is out of our wheelhouse, um, and this is why we we partnered uh, with the people at mphormones.com. So uh, part of your question is like what brands and stuff like that. So it's not so much about brands. It's about am I getting this through a legitimate pharmacy or am I getting quote unquote research chemicals, in which case I could be getting anything. That's really the big divide. If you want to make sure you're not getting some weird stuff or, you know, things that could maybe cause bad reactions or, or even just not getting monitored by a doctor, then you want to go through a company that uses doctors and works with an actual pharmacy because that pharmacy has to follow the same regulations for when they create pharmaceuticals. So, uh, not only, not only that, but they're also, when they do your, your, cause b before you're going to want to get your blood work done, even though you don't have to, to get peptides, you could definitely skip that part. I recommend getting your blood work so that they can, they can communicate that to you. I mean, every time I tend to do this, I, I feel like I learned something new about my behaviors, habits, and then go back and either make adjustments nutritionally or they add something into my regimen. So I think, you know, complementing not only the the peptide stack that you consider doing, but also getting your blood work done and you having, uh, you mm -hmm. know, these doctors take a look at that so that you know that, oh, okay, I've now introduced this into my life and now I'm seeing these other markers improve. I think there's tremendous value in that. And that's, I mean, that's really their job is to be able to do that panel. You do it like the way it works is you'll, you'll sign up with them. You'll fill out all the questionnaire. They'll give you a thing to go get your blood work done. Then you'll come back and then you'll meet with a consult and they'll basically go over the blood panel with you. And then you could tell them like, oh, I'm having these back issues or I, these are my goals, maybe fat loss or, oh, I want to try and build more muscle or my energy levels are here. And they can talk to you about, you know, potentially upping your growth hormone. They can talk to you about the, you know, BPC-157, like Sal mentioned. There's stuff for leaning out. There's, There's stuff for cognitive performance. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. There's lots of cool compounds out there now in that direction. Yeah. And, and definitely the actionable steps is what Adam's talking about in terms of, like, getting to that point. Uh, were you able to listen to our episode with Dr. Seed or uh, Jake Campbell? Because we also, like, brought people on the show to try and explain uh, a lot of the benefits in more detail uh, with that, with the peptides. So if you haven't, make sure and check out those episodes. Yeah, no, the only one I've heard from, from you guys is uh, the one with Ben Greenfield, oh. um, which, you know, you kind of, you yeah. touched, you touched it and then, you know, went into the fatherhood stuff. And so I was just hoping, but you MP hormones, yeah. um, that's good information information that's kind of what I was looking for. where do you where do you start yeah go yeah, go, go mp hormones.com and if you want to listen to episodes that are peptide focused dr seeds and jay campbell two episodes we did recently definitely yeah. listen to those we go real, real that's all the whole thing depth, was, yeah all the whole peptide things about based. peptides yeah. so you get to hear all the everything on that so that that would be the recommendation yeah. go to mp hormones.com fill out the questionnaire in there get yourself set up there go listen to those two episodes you'll feel really informed on what you for should sure do. He must be in the Bermuda Triangle right now, Doug. <laughs> must be. Yeah. Well, uh, send him that link. Looks like he's disconnected. So, thanks, Jackson. Yeah. He Have fun on your vacation. Yeah. I'm a little jealous. Yeah, have a good cruise. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, little, <laughs> a little jealous of it. You know, hey, of all the pet. Also, here's the other thing too. There seems to be an individual variance with some of these peptides, where some people get you know, notice some and other people don't notice them so much and they got to try different ones. I'll say for me, the biggest ones were Ibutamorin literally was a crazy mass builder, like strength and pumps and like, it feels yeah. wild. Yeah. You look crazy on that one. Yeah. Uh, Mott C. I really, really like that one a lot. Other people don't notice it. I noticed that one big time. I like the C max for cognitive performance. I noticed that one a mm -hmm. lot. Um, those are the, those are the three so far that I've tried where I'm like, these are, Mott these are big time. And, and C max. Yeah. For you, love it. Yeah, I oh, haven't. Done, I haven't done Mott C yet. 
Um, I do like the C Max. I mean, I'm like I just took something like, again this morning. So of of all the cognitive ones I've messed yeah. around with, it's probably the the one that I feel the nasal spray one. So that um, ibutamore, and I'm with you, man. If I'm if I wanted to get on a bulk right now, I would run ibutamore. Yeah. I, I sleep like a baby on it, and I, my appetite goes through the through roof. The roof. On it. So I love I love that. Um, for those, those are the main. Oh, and, and then, then the the, I got to get on BPC. That's my. Next so one. I just ordered that. So I just ordered that from Jesse. I called them up, and and because of the issues that I've been having with my quad, so I'm actually really excited to try that and see if that. So makes I'm going to do BPC one five seven orally. So if you take it orally it's for gut healing, it right? heals Effects. the gut. That's exactly what I was yeah. thinking. No, so that's that's what I'm. So you can inject it or oral. I'm doing the oral. For well, that gut. one is the one that is most is the most popular because it's had the most just tons of yeah, yeah, ton, ton of anecdotes on that yeah. Yeah. And, and animal studies mainly, but anecdotes pretty well. So Mont C, you like it now, huh, Justin? You I can do. Tell. It's it, it it. I do feel the effects. I feel a bit of an energy charge um and you do look less fat too <laughs> thanks man i've been you know i haven't adjusted anything so it's it helping. does make you leaner after a while i swear to god though. no this fool's looked jacked for a while he's been undercover like like the other day we yeah, got he's we wears were, big ass i don't talk about it where's yeah, yeah. big ass jackets trying to pretend yeah, like yeah, yeah. they don't even know yeah they don't even, <laughs> they know. Don't even know all dude. right just I'm high, I'm high. all right look if you like mind pump head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our guides we have fitness guides that are free that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. Also, come find us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 